Hey there, Chris Woods here from Daily STEM, and a lot of people have asked me questions about uh, the different drawings that I do that, that look three-dimensional, where I'm using blocks and, and this fancy dot paper called isometric dot paper, uh, and it's really good for kids because it helps them to be able to visualize things two-dimensionally and three-dimensionally, which is an important skill, especially in math and engineering and all the STEM fields. Um, but here's the other thing. They love Minecraft and different games like that, and it's a lot like that. So actually, the kids are going to probably pick up on it faster than you. But I just want to show a little bit of what I do uh, to make it a little bit easier for, for you to understand so that you can maybe have some techniques to work with your kids. First off, I always start um, just by finding some blocks. These are centimeter cubes that I've ordered over the years, and yeah, they kind of run out, and I, I put them into little bags like this so I can just hand each kid a bag as a, in the classroom, and they can grab one. Uh, Bloxel's cubes also work uh, as well. Uh, but I always start out with a two-dimensional drawing. And so I, I give them some just regular graph paper, and what I'll do is I'll make a base plan. I'll draw one on the board just real simple. And so that means that there's uh, three blocks and two blocks and one block and one block stacked up. And so I'll have them get out the blocks and build that building. So I'm going to do that right now. I always give them scraps of paper that they can write all the different directions on. And then they build that with the front of the building at the front of their paper. So we built that base plan, and then I have kids draw it from each view, each direction. Um, and that's actually sometimes called an orthographic uh, view or orthographic drawings. Um, but I just try to call it just something real simple, just base building plans. Uh, so they have a base view, which is basically like a top view of that building. Uh, the front is if you're like really tiny, and I tell kids, if you're really tiny, stand in front of that building, and what does it look like? And then also from the right. Now, you can also get them to think about that the right and the left are just opposite, and so are the front and the back, and that's why we don't need to do both. Uh, I also, sometimes for kids who are having a real difficult time with it, I'll hold a flashlight right in front of the building and a piece of paper behind it and say, look at that shadow. That shadow is actually uh, that outline of that building. Or I'll or have them like, lean way down on their desk and look at that building. And, and then basically I just have them draw it on graph paper. And what I do is I just do a series. I just kind of keep going and I just make a little more complicated base plan. And then I have kids draw. And then I'll give, sometimes I'll get to the point where I'll put two different base plans one that's a little bit easier and one that's a little bit tougher uh, because some kids are going to pick up on it real quick and then uh, I can be helping the other kids and those challenged kids that, that they're like loving it and they're they're figuring it out just like that they can hop on to the second one whereas everybody else I can be helping get through the first one so once you get it done where the kids are really good at drawing two-dimensional and that's going to take a few days um, take your time um, just just make it fun or, or even just do it as, as different Friday type activities as well. Then I pull out the isometric dot paper and I've got some of these you can download on, on my website dailystem.com. Uh, you can find them in the, on the resources page. Um, but then I get kids to be able to draw them three dimensional. And basically you can take this building and you can draw it from any direction you want. And so I'm going to draw it from the front right corner which is kind of the standard corner to draw from. So just getting kids to be able to draw things three-dimensionally and two-dimensionally helps them to be able to create and innovate all different other types of things in your STEM classroom, in your maker space. Uh, and it's just so important if we can give kids some of those skills. Uh, and it's a great way also you can, you can say what's the average height, what's the maximum amount of blocks you could use, or the minimum amount. And then you can talk about sustainability and you could talk about um, effective use of materials. Um, it's just some great ideas. And if you need more help, just reach out to me at dailystem.com or on Twitter at DailyStem.